ఇన్ ద గ్రో బై రాయనసుకి అకుటకవ ద టెస్టిమోని ఆఫ్ అ వుడ్ కట్టర్ క్వశ్చన్డ్ బై అ హై పోలీస్ కమిషనర్ ఎస్ సర్ సర్టన్లీ ఇట్ వాజ్ ఐ హూ ఫౌండ్ ద బాడీ దిస్ మార్నింగ్ యాజ్ యూజువల్ ఐ వెంట్ టు కట్ మై డైలీ కోటా ఆఫ్ సీడర్స్ వెన్ ఐ ఫౌండ్ ద బాడీ ఇన్ అ గ్రూ ఇన్ అ హాలో ఇన్ ద మౌంటైన్స్ ద ఎగ్జాక్ట్ లొకేషన్ అబౌట్ హండ్రెడ్ అండ్ ఫిఫ్టీ మీటర్స్ ఆఫ్ ద యమాషినా స్టేజ్ రోడ్ ఇట్స్ అన్ అవుట్ ఆఫ్ ద వే బ్యాంబూ అండ్ సీడాస్ గ్రూ ఆఫ్ బ్యాంబూ అండ్ సీడాస్ ద బాడీ వాస్ లెయింగ్ ఫ్లాట్ ఆన్ ఇట్స్ బ్యాక్ డ్రెస్డ్ ఇన్ అ బ్లూయిష్ సిల్క్ కిమోనో అండ్ అ రింకల్ హెడ్ డ్రెస్ ఆఫ్ ద కయోటో స్టైల్ అ సింగిల్ స్వాడ్ స్ట్రోక్ హ్యాడ్ పియర్స్డ్ ద బ్రెస్ట్ ద ఫాల్ అండ్ బ్యాంబూ బ్లేడ్స్ అరౌండ్ ఇట్ వే స్టెయిన్ విత్ బ్లడీ బ్లాసమ్స్ no the blood was no longer running the wound had dried up i believe and also a gad fly was stuck fast there hardly noticing my footsteps you ask me if i saw a sword or any such thing no nothing sir i found only a rope at the root of a cedar nearby and well in addition to a rope i found a comb that was all apparently he must have made a battle of it before he was murdered because the grass had fallen bamboo blades had been trampled down all around a horse was nearby no sir it's hard enough for a man to enter let alone a horse the testimony of a traveling buddhist priest questioned by a high police commissioner the time certainly it was about noon yesterday sir the unfortunate man was on the road from sikiyama to yamashina He was walking towards Sikiyama with a woman accompanying him on horseback who I have since learned was his wife. A scarf hanging from her head hid her face from view. All I saw was the color of her clothes, a lilia-colored suit. A horse was a sorrel with a fine mane. The lady's height? Oh, about 4 feet 5 inches. Since I am a Buddhist priest, I took little notice about her details. well uh, the man was armed with a sword as well as a bow and arrows and i remember that he carried some 20 odd arrows in his quiver little did i expect that he would meet such a fate truly human life is as evanescent as the morning dew or a flash of lightning my words are inadequate to express my sympathy for him the testimony of a policeman questioned by a high police commissioner the man that i arrested He is a notorious brigand called Tajamoro. When I arrested him, he had fallen off his horse. He was groaning on the bridge at Avatakuchi. The time? It was in the early hours of last night. For the record, I might say that the other day I tried to arrest him, but unfortunately he escaped. He was wearing a dark blue silk kimona and a large plain sword. And as you see, he got a bow and arrows some way. You say that this bow and these arrows look like the ones owned by the dead man? Then Tajomaru must be a mur- must be the murderer. The bow wound with leather strips, the black liquid quirk, the 17 arrows with hawk feathers, these were all in his possession I believe. Yes, sir, the horse is as you say a sorrel with a fine mane. A little beyond the stone bridge I found the horse grazing by the roadside with his long rein dangling. Surely there is some providence in his having been thrown by the horse. Of all the robbers prowling around Kyoto, this Tajomaru has given the most grief to the women in town. Last autumn, a wife who came to the mountain back of the Pindara of the Torbi temple, presumably to pay a visit, was murdered along with a girl. It has been suspected that it was his doing. If this criminal murdered the man you cannot tell what he may have done with the man's wife may it please your honor to look into this problem as well the testimony of an old woman questioned by a high police commissioner yes sir that corpse is the man who married my daughter he does not come from koyoto he was a samurai in the town of kufu in the province of wakasa His name was Kanasawa no Takihiko and his age was 26. He was of a gentle disposition so I am sure he did nothing to provoke the anger of others. My daughter her name is Masago 
and her age is 19. She is a spirited, fun-loving girl, but I am sure she has never known any man except Takehiko. She has a small, oval, dark, complicated face with a mole at the low corner of her left eye. Yesterday, Takihiko left for Wakasa with my daughter. What bad luck it is that things should have come to such a sad end. What has become of my daughter? I am resigned to giving up my son-in-law as lost, but the fate of my daughter worries me sick. For heaven's sake, leave no stone unturned to find her. I hate the robber Tajomaru or whatever his name is. Not only my son-in-law but my daughter. Her later words were drowned in tears. Tajomaru's confession. I killed him but not her. Where is she gone? I can't tell. Oh, wait a minute. No torture can make me confess what I don't know. Now things have come to such a head. I won't keep anything from you. Yesterday, a little past noon, I met that couple. Just then, a puff of wind blew and raised a hanging scarf so that I caught a glimpse of a face. Instantly, it was again covered from my view. That may have been one reason. She looked like a bodhisattva. At that moment, I made up my mind to capture her even if I had to kill her man. Why? To me, killing isn't a matter of such great consequence as you might think. When a woman is captured, her man has to be killed anyway. In killing, I use the sword I wear at my side. Am I the only one who kills people? You? You don't use your swords? You kill people with your power, with your money. Sometimes you kill them on the pretext of working for their good. It's true they don't bleed. They are in the best of health. But all the same, you have killed them. It is hard to say who is a greater sinner, you or me. An ironical smile. But it'd be good if I could capture a woman without killing her man. So I made up my mind to capture her and do my best not to kill him. But it's out of the question on the Yamashina stage road. So I managed to lure the couple into the mountains. It was quite easy. I became their traveling companion and I told them there was an old mount in the mountain over there and that I had dug it open and found many mirrors and swords. I went on to tell them I had buried the things in a grove behind the mountain and that I would like to sell them at a low price to anyone who would care to have them. Then you see, isn't greed, greed terrible? He was beginning to be moved by my talk before he knew it. In less than an hour, they were driving their horse toward the mountain with me. When he came in front of the groove, I told them that the treasures were buried in it and I asked them to come and see. The man had no objection. He was blinded by greed. The woman said she would wait on horseback. It was natural for her to say so at the sight of a thick groove. To tell you the truth, my plan worked just as I wished. So I went into the groove with him, leaving her behind alone. The groove is only bamboo for some distance. After 50 yards ahead, there is a rather open clump of cedars. It was a convenient spot for my purpose. Pushing my way through the groove, I told him a plausible lie that the treasures were buried under the cedars. When I told him this, he pushed his laborious way towards a slender cedar visible through the groove. After a while, the bamboo thinned out and we came to where a number of cedars grew in a row. As soon as we got there, I seized him from behind. Because he was a trained sword-bearing warrior, he was quite strong, but he was taken by surprise, so there was no help for him. I soon tied him up to the root of a cedar. Where did I get a rope? Thank heaven, being a robber, I had a rope with me, since I might have to scale a wall at any moment. Of course, it was easy to stop him from calling out by gagging his mouth with fallen bamboo leaves. When I disposed of him, I went to his women and asked her to come and see him because he seemed to have been suddenly taken sick. It's needless to say that this plan also worked well. The women, her siege hat off, came into the depths of the groove where I led her by the hand. The instant she caught sight of her husband, she drew a small sword. I have never seen a woman of such violent temper. If I had been off guard, I would have got a thrust in my side. I dodged, but she kept on slashing at me. She might have wounded me deeply or killed me, 
but i am tajo maro i managed to strike down her small sword without drawing my own the most spirited woman is defenseless without a weapon at least i could satisfy my desire for her without taking her husband's life yes without taking his life i had no wish to kill him i was about to run away from the group leaving the women behind in tears when she frantically clung to my arm in broken fragments of words she asked that either her husband or i die she said it was more trying than death to have a shame known to two men she gasped out that she wanted to be the wife of whichever survived then a furious desire to kill him seized me gloomy excitement telling you in this way no doubt i seem a crueler man than you but that's because you didn't see her face especially her burning eyes at that moment as i saw her eye to eye i wanted to make her my wife even if i were to be struck by lightning i wanted to make her my wife this single desire filled my mind this was not only last as you might think at that time if i would have had no other desire than last i would surely not have minded knocking her down and running away then i wouldn't have stained my sword with his blood but the moment i gazed at a face in the dark grow i decided not to leave there without killing him but i didn't like to resort to unfair means to kill him i untied him and told him to cross swords with me the rope that was found at the root of the cedar is the rope i dropped at the time furious with anger he drew his thick sword and quick as thought he sprang at me ferociously without speaking a word i needn't tell you how our fight turned out the 23rd stroke please remember this i'm impressed with this fact still nobody under the sun has ever clashed swords with me 20 strokes a cheerful smile when he fell i turned towards her lowering my blood stained sword but to my great astonishment she was gone i wondered to where she had run away i looked for her in the clump of cedars i listened but heard only a groaning sound from the throat of the dying man as soon as we started to cross swords she may have run away through the grove to call for help when i thought of that i decided it was a matter of life and death to me so robbing him of his sword and bow and arrows i ran out to the mountain road there i found a horse still grazing quietly it would be a mere waste of words to tell you the later details but before i entered town i had already parted with the sword that's all my confession i know that my head will be hung in chains anyway so put me down for the maximum penalty a defiant attitude the confession of a woman who has come to the shimusi temple that man in the blue silk kimono after forcing me to yield to him laughed mockingly as he looked at my bound husband how horrified my husband must have been but no matter how hard he struggled in agony the rope cut into him all the more tightly in spite of myself i ran stumbling toward his side or rather i tried to run toward him but the man instantly knocked me down just at that moment i saw an indescribable light in my husband's eye something beyond expression his eyes make me shudder even now that instantaneous look of my husband who couldn't speak a word told me all his heart the flash in his eyes was neither anger nor sorrow only a cold light a look of loathing more struck by the look in his eyes than by the blow of the thief i called out in spite of myself and fell unconscious in the course of time i came to and found that the man in blue silk was gone i saw only my husband still bound to the root of the cedar i raised myself from the bamboo blades with difficulty and looked into his face but the expression in his eyes was just the same as before beneath the cold contempt in his eyes there was hatred shame grief and anger i don't know how to express my heart at that time reeling to my feet i went up to my husband takijiro i said to him since things have come to this pass i cannot live with you i am determined to die but you must die too you saw my shame i can't leave you alive as you are this was all i could say still he went on gazing at me with loathing and contempt my heart breaking i looked for his sword it must have been taken by the robber neither his sword nor his bow and arrows were to be seen in the grove 
but fortunately my small sword was lying at my feet raising it overhead once more i said now give me your life i will follow you right way when he heard these words he moved his lips with difficulty since his mouth was stuffed with leaves of course his voice could not be heard at all but at a glance i understood his words despising me his look said only kill me neither conscious nor unconscious i stabbed the small sword through the lilia colored kimono into his breast again at this time i must have fainted by the time i managed to look up he had already breathed his last still in bonds a streak of sinking sunlight streamed through the clump of cedars and bamboos and shone on his pale face gulping down my sobs i untied the rope from his dead body and what has become of me since i have no more strength to tell you anyway i hadn't the strength to die i stabbed my small my own throat with a small sword i threw myself into a pond at the foot of the mountain and i tried to kill myself in many ways unable to end my life i am still living in dishonor a lonely smile worthless as i am i must have been forsaken even by the most merciful kavanon i killed my own husband i was by the robber whatever can i do what can i gradually while in sobbing the story of the murdered man as told through a medium after violating my wife the robber sitting there began to speak comforting words to her of course i couldn't speak my whole body was tied fast to the root of a cedar but meanwhile i winked at her many times as much as to say don't believe the robber i wanted to convey some such meaning to her but my wife sitting dejectedly on the bamboo leaves was looking hard at her lap to all appearance she was listening to his words i was agonized by jealousy in the meantime the robber went on with his clever talk from one subject to another the robber finally made his bold brazen proposal once your virtue is stained you won't get along well with your husband so won't you be my wife instead it's my love for you that make me that made me be violent towards you while the criminal talked my wife raised her face as if in a trance she had never looked so beautiful as at that moment what did my beautiful wife say in answer to him while i was sitting bound there i am lost in space but i have never thought of her answer without burning with anger and jealousy truly she said then take me away with you wherever you go this is not the whole of a sin if that were all i would not be tormented so much in the dark when she was going out of the groove as if in a dream a hand in the robbers she suddenly turned pale and pointed at me tied to the root of the cedar and said kill him i cannot marry you as long as he lives kill him she cried many times as if she had gone crazy even now these words threatened to blow me headlong into the bottomless abyss of darkness has such a hateful thing come out of a human mouth ever before have such cursed words ever struck a human ear even once even once such a, a sudden cry of scorn at these words the robber himself turned pale kill him she cried clinging in his arms looking hard at her he answered neither yes nor no but hardly had i thought about his answer before she had been knocked down into the bamboo leaves again a cry of scorn quietly folding his arms he looked at me and said what will you do with her kill her or save her you have only to nod kill her for these words alone i would like to pardon his crime while i hesitated she shrieked and ran into the depths of the grove the robber instantly snatched at her but he failed even to grasp her sleeve after she ran away he took up my sword and my bow and arrows with a single stroke he cut one of my bonds i remember his mumbling my fate is next then he disappeared from the grove i was silent after that no i heard someone crying untying the rest of my bonds i listened carefully and i noticed that it was my own crying long silence i raised my exhausted body from the foot of the cedar in front of me there was shining the small sword which my wife had dropped i took it up and stabbed it into my breast a bloody lump rose to my mouth but i didn't feel any pain when my breast grew cold everything was as silent as the dead in their graves 
what profound silence not a single bird note was heard in the sky over this grave in the hollow of the mountains only a lonely light lingered on the cedars and mountains by and by the light gradually grew fainter till the cedars and bamboo were lost to view lying there i was enveloped in deep silence then someone crept to me i tried to see who it was but darkness had already been gathering round me that someone drew the small sword softly out of my breast in its invisible hand at the same time once more blood flowed into my mouth and once and for all i sank down into the darkness of space thank you